Madam Vice President, it's time, your time. You are most likely to be the Democratic presidential nominee this November. And you're inheriting a bit of a shit show, a party in disarray, behind in the polls, to a fascist. So what are you going to do about it? Well, here are my seven brief pieces of unsolicited advice for you, Madam Vice President. Number one, attack, 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 because attack is the best form of defense. You are going to get attacked by them from day one, hour one. They're going to be all over you. Your policies, your record, your voice, your race, your gender, your clothes, your parents. The best form of defense is a good offense. Attack back. Attack hard. Go after Trump's criminal conviction and indictment like the former prosecutor you are. Make the case against his criminality, authoritarianism, and racism against you in a way that we've all seen you do before. Attorney General Barr, has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh... Yes or no? Have you had any conversation about Robert Mueller or his investigation with anyone at that firm? Yes or no? Well, is there a person you're talking about? I'm asking you a very direct question, yes or no? Oh, and if you debate him, definitely call him weird, like you said you would back in 2018. Number two, age. Voters had an issue with Joe Biden's mental health and the fact that he was the oldest person to ever run for president. Well, now it's time to remind them about Trump's mental health and that he is now the oldest person to ever run for president. Make his age an issue. Yes, it's a little hypocritical and cynical, but it's still worth doing. Number three, Gaza. We are long overdue for a reset on Gaza. Almost 40,000 people dead, many of them killed with U.S. weapons that Joe Biden supplied. You were the one pushing the Biden White House to be more sympathetic towards Palestinians. You called for a ceasefire before they did. Lean into that and try and win back some of those voters in Michigan and Georgia who voted uncommitted on Joe Biden in the primaries. You need them. Number four, abortion. Lead the charge on abortion in a way that, for multiple obvious reasons, Joe Biden has never been able to. Trump is vulnerable on abortion. J.D. Vance is even more vulnerable on abortion. He wants the police to follow and arrest women from red states who get abortions in blue states. So talk about it all day, every day, 24-7. You own this issue. Number five, go to Wisconsin. Don't do what Hillary Clinton did. Don't take anything for granted in those swing states. Go to Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, Arizona, Pennsylvania. Be on the ground. Prove the people who say you can't connect with blue-collar, white, working-class voters. Prove them wrong. And don't just tell those voters what this administration has done. Tell them what you're going to do for them on the minimum wage, on health care, on drug prices. Number six, pick the right white guy to be your running mate. I don't know if that's Governor Andy Bashir of Kentucky or Governor Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania or Secretary Pete Buttigieg, but just make sure you pick the right white guy. Sadly, that's going to be really important. And number seven, enjoy yourself. This is going to be the toughest four months of your life. Have fun. Smile. Offer voters an optimistic message about the future. Be Reagan-esque, but also be real. Be you. <laughs> oh, and of course, don't forget to tell them about the coconut tree or what came before them. Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> You exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you.